Hello lovely people, in this video we will be looking at Berry Back BEA1 Digital to Analog Converter. Before we start, I would like to thank Peter from Malaysia because he bought this and he bought one for himself and he bought one for me just for testing and sent it to me. So Peter, thank you very much for that. Let's unbox this thing and let's have a look what it is. So it comes in a very simple, normal box. So this thing costs about $50 in the US. You can buy it in multiple places. I know some people already tested it. You can find it in Europe, you can find it in AliExpress. Uh, it sells everywhere. Very simple cardboard box. Some um, user manual, instructions, how to use it, and this is the device, and we have antenna, antenna, and we do have a USB cable, it's just I put it somewhere, I'm not sure where, because I was testing it already. So in this video, it's going to be like unboxing, overview, and we're going to have a look at the distortion measurements of this little thing. Let me remove all these caps, and let's put the Bluetooth antenna just for it to look a bit better. There you go, and this is the whole device. When you take it out of the box, it does feel heavy. It, it feels heavier than it looks like, and to me, it feels a bit heavier than it should be, because it's just a simple Bluetooth receiver, DAC, so... We'll see what's inside and we'll see why is it so heavy. So from the front, we have just some writing made in China, Bluetooth decoder. So on one side, we have a Bluetooth light and we have analog output. So this is the DAC that gives you left and right. On the back, we have USB, USB-C. So this is for power or data because you can use it as a USB DAC as well. So you can connect your either phone or a laptop or whatever, or you can use just a power brick just to power it. And you have output, optical and coax, and on this side, analog. If we're gonna have a look at the specs, the specs we have here, Bluetooth 5.3, RC output is 2 volts RMS and I detested it, I can confirm it, 2 volts clean, uh, 48 or 96 kilohertz, so it does go up to 96k, which is very good to see. And with the Bluetooth, it has basically all the Bluetooth codecs that you can have, LDAC, aptx hd aptx lossless sbc aac. Now the main use case scenario for this device would be in our cars is to have it powered up with a small DC DC charger that gives five volts. You can buy these for like a pound and stream Bluetooth LDAC into this device and get a digital output that goes directly into your DSP. So this is the main thing because I doubt that somebody's gonna use it with analog outputs as a DAC, maybe, but for me personally, this is Bluetooth in, digital out. I did test one similar device that didn't have a DAC, so it had only digital outputs, and that one cost like half the price, 25 pounds on AliExpress, and that was performing extremely well as well. So one thing before we, I'm going to show you the measurements, I want to open it up and I'm going to show you what's inside. If you watch my channel, probably you know that I like to open stuff up and see what's inside. So I'm gonna put this aside because I wanna show you the case. This case is thick. Like you can see the aluminum. And basically this is why it's heavy because all of this, it doesn't weigh anything. This weighs a lot because it's so thick. Now, maybe this is just to make the product feel more premium because when you have a thick, metal case that weighs a lot, it feels much more premium in your hand. But to me, it feels like really unnecessary because this case doesn't serve any heat dissipation purposes. So it's, it's just a case and it is thick, unnecessarily thick in my opinion. Now inside we have this Bluetooth, which I didn't take out and we have all of this. So you cannot see very much buried back. Now it does say that it has Qualcomm aptx HD. So Qualcomm is like a trademark chip. LDAC and all of these noise cancelling. I don't know why it is, but it is what it is. Now on the other side, uh, if we're going to have a look at this blue dotter board. On this blue dotter board, if I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit, 
this black chip on the left side, which is this one. So this is supposed to be the Qualcomm chip, the Bluetooth chip that supports LDAC. If I'm going to turn it upside down, I don't know if you're able to read. At the very top, you can see here, it does say Qualcomm. Now, the only thing is when, I, when we opened the Helix streamer previously, it had the same kind of daughter board and the same Qualcomm chip. However, that one had a sticker. This one doesn't have a sticker. Is it genuine Qualcomm chip? I'm not sure. I don't know. But based on performance, it looks like it. So yeah, this is the device. Now we're going to jump into the laptop and we're going to have a look at the measurements. So we're going to start with the non so interesting part, which is uh, Bluetooth LDAC in and RCA out. So basically this is checking the DAC that uh, I don't know if anybody's going to use it, but I'm not going to use it for sure because we'll be using digital outputs. But if anybody's interested, we can have a look at this. So I'm going to change this to volts and we can see that um, the THD itself is quite low, but the noise is high. So for a DAC 0 0.1, it's, I want to say poor quality because we have amplifiers that perform better than this. Now in regards to the voltage at 1% we have slightly more than 2 volts something like this which is like 2.1 volts. So on the phone if you're gonna have it on the phone and connected Bluetooth uh, you have to do a few clicks down just to go down to this which is like 1.7 volts, then you're going to have the cleanest signal on the DAC output. Now with this, it doesn't look pretty, to be honest. It doesn't look like anything special. Quite a lot of noise, quite a lot of harmonics. So this is a sine tone. Here we have intermodulation with the lower end, quite poor, minus 80 dB. And the higher end, kind of similar. There's a lot of harmonics, minus 65 dB. So the DAC itself, uh, meh, it's not nice. Now, if we're going to check the LDAC and digital outputs. So I did test this uh, using the optical, but with coax, it would be kind of the same. Now for this, we're going to have a look at not voltage because optical doesn't have any voltage. So the maximum signal and the lower signal. Basically, the more you increase the level, the more is going down. So the lowest on full tilt, we have what, 0 0.005, which is very close to my DAC that I was testing. So if anybody was interested in how I tested it, it was kind of a long signal chain. I did play Bluetooth via FIO BTA30 into this device. And from this device, optical output into a SMSL DAC. And then with a Cosmos, I check the analog output. So as long as I know that the analog outputs out of the SMSL measures as good as by themselves, I know that it doesn't add anything, but this adds a little bit because the SMSL is like 0 0.03, which is a little bit lower. So it does add a little bit, but not much. If we're going to have a look THD versus frequency, it's a totally flat line. It doesn't affect anything. Now with the sine tone, so this is DAX measurement. You can see 0 0.005 and my DAC measures 0 0.003, something like that. So it does add a little bit noise, but basically nothing. Intermodulation is amazing as well. Just one little bit here with the higher frequencies. It does add a little bit with the higher frequencies here. So the LDAC influences a little bit the higher frequencies. On the lower frequencies, it's totally fine, but a little bit on higher. However, it's still minus 90 dB. So it's clearly not going to be audible at all. So on digital outputs, if you're using LDAC is amazing. Linearity is flat as well. You can see this is 1 dB increments and we have from 20 to 20 is literally flat. 0 0.3 dB down or something like that. Really, really flat frequency response. Now, I did test it as well with the SBC codec, which is slightly worse. So the SBC codec is not the best one, but a lot of head units uses it and a lot of other simple Bluetooth devices use the SBC codec. So it's just interesting to see uh, what is the difference between LDAC and SBC. And you can see the difference is huge. So we had this where you have all the way up to 005 
and with SBC it's kind of flat at 0.04 so it's not a totally disaster but it's not as clean as LDAC so this I did this test because if your phone is for example it doesn't support LDAC it doesn't support aptX HD and it supports only SBC so you can expect these results which it's not great but for a Bluetooth it's not bad at all so this is SBC as well let's have a look at this you can see the SBC codec has a lot of noise so this is weird on bluetooth because it's not harmonics harmonics you would have 2k 3k but this is like five seven and really really high so this is just bluetooth noise into modulation very similar not great but not a disaster as well and on the higher frequencies is what do we have minus 72 which is eh, not great but we have a lot of these spikes which are a bit weird now the other thing that I tested, I did kind of real world scenario where I tested the digital output of the Berry back using smartphone input, not the Fio BTA, but my actual smartphone that I use for daily. So in my case, it's a Pixel 6 Pro. And for example, here we can see this is the performance of LDAC. So from the Pixel is not as clean as the Fio. So the Fio I'm going to show you was number nine, which is this one. So yeah, Fio and Pixel. So Pixel adds quite a lot of noise, like a lot, a lot of noise. However, that noise, if you can see, it's 120 dB and down. So again, even if it is noisy, it's not going to be audible at all. But smartphone adds something to it. So this is on LDAC codec. This is aptX HD, so aptX HD, it, it looks cleaner uh, with no harmonics. However, the floor noise goes up to 116, whereas on LDAC is close to 140. aptX HD loses quite a lot of dynamic range, but not as bad as SBC. So SBC, you can see all of this is just horrible. And AC, AAC, which is the worst simplest codec of bluetooth is just i have no words it's really really bad so we can have a look at the intermodulation distortion again on ldac there's just noise but again 120 db and down but there's loads and loads of noise uh, aptx hd again noise level floor is very very high no harmonics still minus 114 which is not that bad no harmonics at all which is great to see. SBC is really bad and AAC is a disaster. So if you will get this device and even use at least SBC, it would be a huge upgrade compared to the AAC. Now on this, we're gonna have a look at the higher frequency. So we can see on LDAC, the 18 and 20K bands are there, which is fine. On aptX HD, we have, yeah, a horrible mountain, but we still have both of them. SBC, same, both. However, on AAC, we have only 18K. So AAC, above 18K, it just it drops dead. There's nothing there. And we can see exactly the same from the frequency response, just like this. We can see that it is flat, the frequency response. However, the LDAC goes all the way up to 48K and then it drops down. So it's not as clean because it was with a white noise. So just ignore that. But the extension is there, all the way up to 15K. Then we have aptX HD, which is up to 20K solidly. And then 24, 25, it drops down. SBC codec still goes to 20K and a sharper roll off. But AAC, it's like 18, 19K, 19K is drops off a cliff so there's no response above that and that's it the surprising part is that um, this device if using ldac and digital outputs it performs as good as a wired connection obviously the limitation is going to be your bluetooth transmitter so you can see like from my pixel phone it doesn't look as clean however from good ldac device it is as clean as a wired connection. Conclusion time. Would I recommend this device? Hell yeah. 
for the price for 50 bucks it's a no-brainer the only downside as you see when you saw from the measurements is the actual deck but probably you're not going to be using that anyway so price wise is a very good alternative to some devices such as Audison Beacon because that one supports LDAC as well. And in the UK, it costs twice as much as this device. Now, if you don't care about the DAC and want only LDAC in digital output, you can find some receivers on AliExpress for like half the price. But those devices, the build quality and everything is a little bit questionable. However, this, it's a solid, it's a solid piece of metal. It doesn't flex at all. It feels like a brick and it feels like it costs much more than it actually costs. So yeah, highly recommend it. It's very nice to see that we have more and more LDAC compatible devices. The only thing now, we need the phone manufacturers to catch up. So Apple, Samsung, and everybody else start making LDAC phones. Thank you very much for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.